Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephen. I'm a traditionally published fantasy author. Today I'm doing a different kind of video. I'm answering one question that I was previously going to do on the last Q&A, but when I started thinking about it and making some notes, it turned out to be quite a long answer. So I'm just going to focus this video on answering that question. And this came from Amy, who's on my Discord forum called Headspace. This is a private writing forum, and she was asking about some of the common mistakes that writers make to do with pace and writing scenes that lag, and what sort of things should she be looking at, and writers in general. The first thing I would say that people should focus on is knowing the genre. Now I can talk about different kinds of genres and the type of book you would normally find, and there's a particular pace and style to all of them. So I'll give you a few examples, but first of all, whatever genre you're writing in, you should be reading within that genre. Now, and I know there are some authors that don't read within the genre that they write because they say it feels too much like a busman's holiday. But when you're first starting out, this is something that you should be doing. You need to know what the typical book, the standard book is within the genre that you're writing. So if you can, go to your local library and borrow books, look at a whole variety of them, look at the most popular ones, or if you can, buy some of them and study them in great detail. How are the chapters structured? How many of them? What's the kind of average? What's the average word count of the book? Which is something I'll come on to later. But let's start with a couple of examples. If you think of a thriller book by somebody like Dean Koontz, these are typically very lean, pacey thrillers that are very short, have a very simple premise. Or you can think of a book like The Girl on the Train. This is where, with reading the back of the book within a couple of sentences, you understand what the book is about, you understand the hook, and hopefully the reader is excited and wants to know more. They want to know what happens next, what goes on, and it doesn't need a huge amount of detail. This is what you want for a thriller. They're sort of really, really fast-paced, really exciting, lots of tension that keeps ratcheting it up, and that's typical for that genre. And what typically happens in books like these is that within the first page, definitely within the first chapter, something really exciting happens. The hook is there so that the reader and the agent and everybody else going through the book at the very beginning thinks, oh my God, I need to know what's going to happen next. This is really exciting or scary or intense or makes me curious what is going to happen next. And that's how these thrillers work. You'll never come across an 800 page thriller and then I'm sure someone's going to go and find one now. But if we're talking about the standards within that type of genre and in those kind of books, they're very, very short. They have short chapters. They're very pacey and very, very quick. The language is usually not very particularly purple. It's quite tight as well because you want someone to read it as quickly as possible and to stay with that pace and to stay excited by it. So if you suddenly have 20 pages describing the trees, then they're going to lose interest. So it's all about pairing something back for this particular genre and this particular style of book. The other thing to talk about is point of view. With a book like this, it is typically done from one point of view. And there again, it's because it keeps it very, very focused so that you are seeing the story through the eyes of this one person who has witnessed the awful inciting event or is trying to escape someone or is you know investigating whatever this thing is. And there again, it makes it a very, very focused story and very, very lean story because you're not having three, four, five points of view. It doesn't fit that genre and it doesn't fit that style of book. But then if you look at something like fantasy books, which is what I write, they can be multiple points of view. And there are some lean, pacey, tight fantasy books that are 350, 400 pages, 500 these days is probably a little bit above average, I would say, but then there are some books that are seven, eight, 900 pages. And the format for them typically is more than one point of view, three or four, with interlocking stories that overlap with each other. You have different perspectives upon the story that all kind of weave together and create this enormous tapestry. The pace will typically be slower because you have to lot more world building because fantasy is obviously set within a secondary world. So you have to describe things in enough detail that the readers understand what they're seeing, even though they've never heard of this thing before and it's completely alien. So they need to be able to absorb the information, find out who the characters are, and get under the skin and know what's going on so that they're carried along with the story. Now, there are peaks and troughs in a fantasy story. You can have really short, pacey chapters when things get really exciting, and longer ones perhaps where the pace slows down. But it's not that constant rush that you would get 
from a thriller like the ones I've talked about, where it's just kind of relentless, relentless, relentless. And the idea is you want people to be so desperate to read the next chapter that most of them end on a cliffhanger or end on a really serious note. Now, you can get things like that in fantasy, yes. The idea is at the end of a chapter, something happens that makes the reader think, oh, I want to know what happens next. That's very, very typical in most books, but it's not the same kind of pace. Another kind of novel to think about is something like Lee Child, who writes the Jack Reacher novels. And there are about 26 of them these days at the moment, as time of recording. And these are investigative stories from one person's perspective, usually Jack himself going out and doing things. They're quite episodic in that it's start and finish and the next adventure does pick up usually after, but you don't have to read the first one or the second one to read the third one. If you're wandering through, you know, an airport or a bookshop, you can pick it up and read it and have a great time. There again, the books are very, very lean. They're very, very pacey. It's tight point of view, but it's not at the same relentless pace as a thriller because even though there are some thriller elements to these kind of adventure stories, it's more of an investigation in some ways. And if you think about crime novels, so a friend of mine, James Oswald, writes the Inspector McLean crime novels, and it's all from McLean's point of view, usually. He's investigating things, trying to work out the murder. And there again, you do get fast chapters, but it's more of a puzzle kind of solving thing. He's pulling the pieces together, he's thinking about it, he's trying to work stuff out. And as the story builds, you know, the pace will increase and things get more exciting and the tension and the stakes get raised. So it's, it's learning about what kind of books you can have. Now, there are variations within every single genre. As I've said, fantasy, I write particularly short books, just kind of my style. I have fairly short chapters. The Coward and the Warrior behind me, neither of them is 500 pages. But then you can get fantasy novels that go up to seven, eight, nine hundred pages. That's not uncommon. Thrillers can be very, very short. We can have a little bit longer, maybe a couple of different points of view, but it's finding what works for you within the genre. But in order to understand and realize what's going on, you need to do your homework first. Just another note on length of novel. I've talked about this a little bit with length of chapters and certain genres being shorter novels and some of them being longer. The best thing you can do to get an average of where yours probably should be is to go to a bookshop, go to a library and pick 10 off the shelf and just write down the word counts and just get an average and then that gives you a good idea and even have a look at how many chapters there are and then that gives you a good idea of roughly how long each chapter is. And there'll be some variation but based upon that you can see if I'm writing a thriller, there's roughly this many chapters across this many books and therefore each chapter is roughly this long. So that's a great kind of way to say, right, what is going on now? What are the most popular books? What's the average length? And that will help you when you're building your story. Talking about scenes, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because Amy was asking about lagging scenes and what you should do. Now, there's a writer called Greg Rucker, who I admire. He's written comics, TV, film, and uh, one of his comics, The Old Guard, was made into a movie for Netflix. So if you want to go and watch that, you can. It's a great, it's a great kind of action film. And he's kind of famous for saying, in comics in particular, where space is limited because you can only have so many speech bubbles and so many images on a page. His thing was typically that he would say, enter a scene late and leave early. So you kind of cut out a lot of the fat, get to the heart of the scene, the heart of the chapter, and then move on. And I think that works for some genres there again, but not all, but it's kind of a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. And when you're writing a scene, if it's a contemporary novel, then there's some things you don't need to explain and talk about because people understand it. So if you have a character getting up in the morning, brushing their teeth, having a shower, getting dressed, and then they have a conversation with someone, do you need to have all of that description about what they're doing in great detail. It could be a couple of lines. It doesn't need to be a huge amount of information unless there's a specific reason in the plot that you need to say that. So example would be if you see them getting dressed and they put on a necklace and the line could be something like this was a late gift, this was a gift from so-and-so's late mother and that's a plot point that you use later on then it's worth having that. But if there's nothing particular of interest to the plot or anything, you don't need to have it. But it could be something that informs the character. So it could be that they open the wardrobe and you can see all of the trousers are black 
and all of the shirts are black and they're just kind of picking the same clothes because they have you know OCD or they have a weird fetish and they can't decide to make decisions so everything's the same and you don't need to explain it you just kind of say something like that and it plants seeds in the mind of the reader and that's what you want and you move on you don't spend lots of time talking about it there and explaining it it might crop up later on in a conversation there again you're just kind of revisiting it very very quickly so that's something you can do to help with the pace of scenes. Another example might be if your character is trying to work out something, some kind of puzzle that they're trying to piece together as part of the story, you could say, you know, they're driving to work and they get caught in traffic. And that's useful as a sort of vehicle for you to then say, right, whilst they're sat there, they start working things out and the cars are gradually edging forward, but they've got the space and the time to plot these things, to try and weave it together, to work out, you know, who the murderer is or whatever it might be. So you can use scenes in that way to do more than one thing. And that's really helpful. It could be, you know, something else that informs upon the character. But sometimes you can just skip details because people understand what certain things are. If you're not writing a modern story like you're writing fantasy, you have to give a bit more information because it could be something completely different that they're not used to. But with modern day thrillers and things like that, there again, that informs the pace. They're quite lean on unnecessary details. Sometimes you give information to a reader with a little clue and you don't go into, into detail about what it is, but you've planted something that you can use later on. So for example, you have two people in a, a scene having a conversation and one of them reaches for a glass of water on the table, for, for example, and their hand shakes, but you don't explain what that means. And it could mean any number of things. It could be that they're really, really nervous. It could be that they're excited. It could be they have an underlying health condition and that's where the hand is shaking. Or it could be that they're a former addict or they're trying to quit smoking and they've got the shakes. But you could plant something like that and then use it later on in whatever you want. And if the reader is paying attention and they've noticed these things, then that's great. And if you have payoffs later on, you've already planted all of the seeds and all the breadcrumbs there. So it's not one of these things where they get to the end and they say, well, you've never set that up anyway. I have no idea what's going on because you have, you've planted these things very subtly and very carefully. And there again, you don't need to go in a huge amount of detail. So that's another way to kind of explain things, set the stage, but keep the pace of the scene quite tight. So all of what I've just talked about in essence can be boiled down to show, don't tell. You give the reader information, you don't go into huge amounts of detail, and you pay it off later. And that is a kind of very popular phrase that people say, show, don't tell. So it's something to think about. The next aspect of pace I wanted to touch on is to do with sentences and chapter length. So in fantasy, they're typically longer books on average than, you know, everyday normal fictions and thrillers and so on. But even then, having something consistent the entire time doesn't pay off. So if you're writing a battle and you're having, you know, someone's in a front line fighting, then the language is going to change. When I write a battle scene, it's very, very punchy. It's very, very lean. It's very kind of visceral. So I don't have enormous amounts of description, but I focus on the most important things because I want to paint a picture within the mind of the reader, but only give them enough detail so that there's gaps and they fill in the rest by themselves. And I've had people say about my books that, the fight scenes are very, very good. They really enjoy the battle scenes because they feel like they're there in the mud fighting alongside other people. And that's something I kind of focus on a lot. So you think about fights on films sometimes and your know, martial arts scenes where they punch each other 57 times or they have great sword battles and it's very, very epic and it's very graceful. And yes, sometimes you can get at that. But if you're a bunch of soldiers and frontline warriors fighting in a battle scene, they haven't got the training, they haven't got the expertise, so what's likely is going to turn into a kind of a scrum with people shoving and kicking each other and punching and biting and really nasty and really brutal and it doesn't really matter as long as you win, no one's going to deduct any points or something. The idea is to kill the other person as quickly and as fast as you can, disable them, kill them and move on and win the battle. So my things are very, very realistic, uh, you know, in that way that... The soldiers just do the best they can in a terrible situation. And so the language will reflect that as well. So change the length of the sentence. Make it short and punchy. Make it visceral. Make it one word sentences sometimes just to kind of really punch the reader in the gut and make them feel something that the character is feeling so that they make them feel like as if they are there. 
Some writers have a very specific style that within a couple of sentences you know who it is. You can just read it and say, oh, you know, that's Cormac McCarthy or that's a Stephen King. And it's just their absolute style or, in fact, author voice. And this is one of those awful phrases that I kind of, I sort of hate, but it is important. When you're first writing, this was the same for me. I was imitating everybody else. All the writers that I admired, I was trying to find my own way, find my own style, but if I go back and read some of the old ones, it would be very obvious to me now to say, well, I was taking that element from so-and-so and that one from so-and-so. And over time, I developed my own voice and my own style, but it's, it's not something that can really be taught, it's just something you have to do through practice. And there again, how the sentence structures work, long and short, will become a part of that, an aspect of your particular brand of writing. So vary the sentence length according to the particular scene. Make the readers feel as if they are there. Scrape away some of the fat when you need to, and if the pace of the story slows and you need to explore a moment or plant seeds or look at the scenery and just have a calm moment before the storm, then you can increase the length of the sentence and even the chapter, and then the next chapter can end a great cliffhanger. It could be really, really, really short, and then so you have this kind of your know, peaks and troughs of some novels and others it's just constantly building, building, building all the way. And then again, at the end of a thriller book, you're not gonna have massive long sentences. It's something that you'll have learnt from looking at the others, working out what they do and imitating the, st the format, if not the style. So as you can see with pace, I barely scratched the surface. I only touched on a couple of aspects and this video is already getting quite long. So if you want to see me revisit this or any other aspects like this in the future, let me know, leave a comment below. But for the meantime, that's all I'm gonna talk about today and I'll be back next week with another video.